Hey guys, my name is Cam and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be starting my Irene collection or actually not starting it since I started it like in July, but basically I'm going to be finally putting away all of my Irene photo cards into a binder. I also have been thinking a lot about photo card overpricing in the community lately and I thought that this video would be a perfect opportunity for me to talk about it since obviously Irene is probably the most overpriced member in Red Velvet and just in general her cards are just so expensive like and for what? So basically today's video is going to be me organizing and also ranting a little bit about k-pop photo cards which sounds stupid but yeah let's just get right into it i'm going to start by taking out all of my irene cards that i've collected and i am using these dragon shield clear sleeves that i got off of amazon and I'll also be using these Ultra Pro Night Pocket Sleeves as well, and I'll try to remember to link everything down below in the description. Let me just insert this page and I can start ranting. Actually, maybe I should just put all of these pages in since there's quite a bit of cards. Um, my mom just walked in. What was I going to do? I think I was gonna start taking these out. So actually, before I start ranting, let me just put everything in chronological order since these are pretty mixed up. Also, my Irene collection is not complete. I'm still missing a few cards and I have their placeholders right here. So I'm missing the Velvet, the Bad Boy Kino, obviously, the Summer Magic Normal version, which is on the way actually, the Savvy photo card, her day two version where she's shouting, but this one is on the way as well, and finally one of the finale cards. I'll put a picture of it right here, but hopefully I can find these cards eventually. I know her finale one is going to be quite difficult to find, but yeah, let's just get right into this video. I don't really have a list of like topics that I want to touch on. I'm just gonna kind of wing it, but basically I'm just kind of frustrated with like people overpricing my member lately especially since i've started collecting irene it's been really really difficult for me to find some of her cards like literally people will be charging like ten dollars for an irene card and then five or six dollars for other members cards i just think it's stupid even when i was collecting Solgi's album cards i noticed this as well because i think like Based on my experience, Solgi is the second most expensive member and Irene is obviously the most expensive member. So just like, I don't know, I always knew that overpricing by member did exist, but it wasn't until I started collecting Irene that I really like started noticing it more, if that makes sense. Like Solgi's cars might be $7 and then like Joy, Wendy, and Yeri might be like $5 and then Irene's cards are like nine or ten dollars which i think is just outrageous like i don't know how irene collectors put up with that kind of behavior like i don't know i would riot because i think it's stupid and also if like i was a k-pop member and i saw that my cards were like half the price of another member i don't know i'd be kind of sad obviously they're they're not seeing us post hashtag red velvet photo card like these are busy women like they they don't care about our little trading cards but i don't know i i just it kind of rubs me the wrong way when on a sale post people will have irene cards for ten dollars i keep using this example but just when they have irene cards and they're like double the amount and even group orders where in my opinion everything should be split like evenly like each card should be like two dollars if it's ten dollars each card should be two dollars i think in a group order that's how it should be split but i see some people charging more for irene or like Sogi's cards in a group order than the other members and i think that's just stupid because then i don't really want to join that group order because i'm like why should i be paying more than other people for irene or Sogi's card like it just it really doesn't make sense it rubs me the wrong way i think it's really stupid and i understand that some members are more sought after like i know that there's a reason behind it but i really do think that we should get rid of that way of thinking because First of all, like I said, it's disrespectful to the idols and indirectly like 
harmful to the fans as well who want to collect those members because then they get a stigma in their mind that oh this member is better than the others or my collection is worth more than others but it really isn't we're all a community we all are should be working together and stuff yeah that's just kind of like my first kind of little spiel about it just overpricing members overpricing certain members sorry and i've kind of been looking into collecting nct more specifically nct dream and just seeing like jisung and chanla i feel like their cards are so much cheaper than the other members i just think it's stupid like it's so sad like i don't know how to i'm, I'm trying to put it into words i can't really put it into words i'm really bad at talking but you kind of get the gist of what i'm trying to say i just hate overpricing my members the next thing i kind of want to touch on is the whole thing with out of print albums like the prices of out of print albums being more expensive i'm kind of going to use the finale and nct empathy 2018 as like the basis for my rant so if you guys didn't know finale is out of print so people are charging probably anywhere from 15 to 20 dollars for a card and i'd consider that like a fair price like normal price not a fair price like a normal price for those cards but sometimes people are hosting auctions for certain cards more specifically sulgi's glitter tears card and irene's photo cards in general like they'll host auctions for them these are album photo cards that should be no more than ten dollars and people are charging $50 for them for, through auctions. Like, I understand that people are bidding on these and people are offering $50, $60, $70 for these cards, but I think it's really irresponsible for the seller to be doing this because then everybody else thinks that it's okay to be charging $50 and then people are charging $50 for the Irene card that I still need on eBay. And I'm like, girl, nobody wants your damn Irene card for 50 freaking dollars. Nobody wants that, okay? And I understand that people are offering their money for these cards. I completely understand that, but I just think it's once again putting a bad stigma in our minds that it's okay to pay that amount when in reality it's really not. And y'all need to stop putting your damn finale photo cards up for auction. No, it's just bad. Just stop doing it. Like, don't do it. And same thing with NCT 2018, the empathy photo cards. Um, people are putting those cards up for auction too. And I saw a Taeyong the other day, actually it was a few weeks ago, go up to $150. Like, ugh, the clownery is astounding. You guys are freaking wild, like $150, really? And occasionally I will see people listing cards for less than $10 and I thank those people so much. Even though I think $10 it's still kind of excessive, but I guess y'all still want to make your dough, so I'll, I'll support the hustle, I suppose. But that's kind of another thing, just like people charging $50 for an out-of-print album card. Like, I understand that it's out-of-print and it's harder to get now, but I don't know. It's just putting a bad stigma in our minds that it's okay to be spending $50 on a goddamn album card when it's really not. And kind of going along with this, like the auction and bidding thing, um, I really hate the whole like auction thing on Instagram. I think I'm kind of hypocritical when I say this because I actually have hosted a bid for one of my Cham photo cards. It was a Levanter broadcast. So I don't know if that gives me an excuse. I don't think it does. I should have just put it on eBay or something for a week. But basically I did host an auction for it and I won't lie, I did not put all of the buyers or interested people in a group chat, which was really irresponsible of myself. And I realize that now that I should have just put everybody in one chat and like kept it super transparent, even though I was completely honest with the buyers and stuff like, oh, this person offered this amount. Like I was completely transparent with the prices, but in retrospect, I probably should have just put everybody in a group chat pretty much on Instagram, Twitter, or Messenger or something. But just like, I hate it when I see auctions and people say DM or comment to bid because there's absolutely no transparency there. Um, people can say through DM or comment, oh, this person offered me $100 for Irene's finale card and they might have only offered $5 for that card. Obviously, that's not true because people will be spending $50 on that card. But I'm just trying to say like, when you're participating in these auctions 
and it's not transparent, like you're not in a group chat or there's no transparency, like these sellers could be telling you that the cards are $50. Like somebody offered their ass $50 for a card when in reality they're, they've only been offered like 10. So just, I think this is just like kind of like a PSA to any buyers or just K-pop collectors in general. Like just always be aware, always be cautious of who you're buying from and just all of that kind of stuff just it's better to be too cautious than to be too trusting in my opinion just i don't know if anybody is hosting an auction just be aware that you could be getting overcharged yeah because i have had instances where sellers will say oh this person has offered me such and such for this card like are you going to outbid them and i say no it's okay and then they get back to me maybe a few minutes later and say actually you can have it for that price and i'm like see i know nobody offered you da -da 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 -da. like you know that ugh, i don't know where i'm trying to get with this but just always be cautious yeah oh my god i forgot to put the sappy placeholder in let me actually move everything down a space The next thing that I kind of want to touch on is like lately I've seen a lot of new accounts pop up especially on the NCT and red velvet trading hashtags of new accounts selling finale cards for example for example which are obviously really really sought after like I said before and basically these accounts have no proofs nothing they're saying oh $100 for this Wendy finale set if I find a screenshot I'll put it up but basically these accounts have no proof and I know people are buying from them like because I see the stuff getting claimed and I see people commenting message check your DMs and stuff like that and this kind of just goes back to the point that I last said about it's better to always be too cautious than to be too trusting like I understand that people are desperate for certain photo cards like these finale cards and stuff but if these accounts don't have proofs, they're asking for concealed cash or PayPal friends and family. Sorry, my mom interrupted me again. But basically, I understand that people are getting desperate for these cards. But if people are shady, like they're asking for friends and family payments, concealed cash, like they have no proofs or anything. It's better to just not trust them, okay? Like, look, you don't get scammed. You don't lose your money. Like, it's just better that way. Like... You save your money, you save the sadness of you getting scammed by just not purchasing. Just, I don't know, I don't know how many times I have to say this, but just, it's better to be too cautious than to be too trusting of these sellers because they will take advantage of you. Like, it's hard times out there, especially with the pandemic. I know people are really desperate for money and stuff. They'll do anything to like scam a few of us K-popies, so always just always 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 just be very very cautious of who you're buying from and just make sure that you're getting the best deal and you're buying it from a trustworthy seller and stuff what do i want to talk about next um maybe i'll touch on people doing quote your own price on cards that they know the worth of i don't know i think this also kind of ties into the whole like bidding thing on finale cards and stuff just like the whole quote your own price thing kind of rose me the wrong way. Like, you know that the seller is asking for $50 or something for that finale card. Like, you know that they have that price in mind. So why don't they just put it on the post? Like, that way nobody will have to waste their time DMing them. The seller won't get irritated. The seller won't be like, ha, you have no money. Like, they can't be rude to you if they just put the damn price in the caption. Like, don't put quote your own price on a card that you already know how much you want for it like do you know what i mean like i just think it's like stupid when sellers put quote your own price on a card that they know the worth of recently i had this experience with a japanese seller where they listed Sulgi's revel of baby wallet photo card which is in general a very rare and hard to find card in my opinion like i've been collecting for how long like eight months i've been collecting Sulgi non album for like six or eight months and I still haven't been able to find it for a decent price. So the seller on Instagram was like, quote your own price. And obviously it's like, don't lowball and stuff like that, right? And I know I've seen these cards go for upwards of $100 and then probably a low 
of like $20. On Mercari Japan, I've seen it occasionally for like $20, which if I could find it for $20, I would pass out. I would pass out right on the spot because that is such a good price and I would pay $40 for DHL for the card. I'm not lying when I say that. If any of you have that card and want to sell it to me, I will take it. But basically, I offered the seller $50 for the card and they said, nope, that's too low. And I'm like, okay, so then how much do you want me to pay for it? Like, what's your counter offer? Because in general, that's how these types of things work, where I'll offer them something and then they have a counter offer and then I can counter offer them and so on and so forth until we agree on the price or I just say, never mind, it's okay. But basically, I asked them, okay, so then how much do you want for the card? And they were like, this card is very, very expensive, even in Japan. It is not that cheap. It is not worth $50. And then I said, okay, so how much do you want me to offer you? Like, do you have a price range in mind? And then they leave me on scene. So, girl, I know you want $120 for the card. So why don't you just tell me that you want $120 for the card so that I don't have to be waiting on your ass for the next week, waiting for you to respond because that seller never responded to me. And yep, I still don't have that card. So moral of the story, just put the price of the card in the description if you know what price you want. Don't put quote your own price if you're not going to be flexible with the price and make counter offers and stuff. I actually finished that off right on time to put in my white sleeves. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of this like mini rant slash organization video. Um, actually, you guys probably couldn't enjoy Irene's beautiful and super duper cute photo cards. So let me just flip through these. If any of you have leads on this finale photo card or are willing to sell it for a reasonable price, aka not $40 or $50, like, you know, hit me up, DM me, and yeah, that's pretty much the end of this organization video. Um, I thought this would be a fitting ending shot since I talked a lot about these finale photo cards, but thank you guys so much for staying to the end of this video. I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to leave any of your opinions on photo card overpricing or just the K-pop collecting community in general in the comments, and I'd love to like discuss or answer any of your questions or like, you know, just talk with you guys. And hopefully I can film a reorganization video of my Sulgi binder since there's going to be so many changes and so many new cards and then I can film my updated photo card collection and yeah once again thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe stay safe stay healthy stay loud and I'll see you in my next video peace